Okay. Finally, finishing chapter 50 of God's book, part 2. And I had just started to read this paragraph, so I'm going to complete it. It's a long paragraph. Don't have too much. I think I got about a page and a paragraph or something like that. Uh, God's book. Oh, the preamble. God's book. <laughs> um, dictated to me by God himself. His spirit is lit upon me and God is in his spirit. Isaiah 11. The spirit of God alights upon the twig of the shoe of the son of Jesse. Because just as well as read, the spirit of God and God lit upon and entered the twig of the shoot of the stump of Jesse. Stump of Jesse being King David's father. I'm a twig in an ancestral tree of King David. And uh, Orthodox Judaism believes God dictated the Torah, the first five books of the Hebrew Bible, And I believe it's on the basis of uh, primarily anyone that he couldn't have possibly known those things to write those books, Genesis, the beginning of all things. You can, yeah, I mean, Leviticus, God's laws, he, would, he, would Moses have just made them up if he was writing it by himself? Of course not. No one. No rabbi today of the face of the earth knows the uh, knowledge that's in this book. They just don't. It's scripture. It's brand new. It's, it's God interpreting his book, the Hebrew Bible, and he did. He dictated to each of the prophets their books, their books. Um, they, they couldn't have known the information he was having to put down and, <laughs> and especially Isaiah 53 it has got so many purposes you know there's no way Isaiah just woke up and came up with all that on his own and it fits with three <clears throat> with um, Jeremiah 31 we oh well basically he had men one way or another right Every book of the Hebrew Bible, the entirety of the book is God's Word. Do not take from it. And no, it's do not add and do not take away anything throughout the Hebrew Bible. I think it's... Well, if they didn't know that God wrote the book of the prophets and the writings, uh, they might not think that applies to them. Is that why they think they can take from them and add to on Isaiah 53? Yeah, they shouldn't have been doing that anyway. It's still a false teaching. Deceitful to your flock if you know better. And I can't imagine Jews for Judaism can read that commentary and with a straight face say, Oh yeah, that clearly is Isaiah 53. World exaltation is required, of course. That's not in the Hebrew Bible. And you, you're used to Judaism of the word exalt in Isaiah 52, 13, I guess. Doesn't apply to the Jewish people at all. It applies to the men described in Isaiah 53. They're in, 13 through 15 are in quotes. That's where 53 begins, and 53 describes a Gentile, according to the Scripture, according to the Hebrew Bible. God comes from Adam, and you should know as well as anybody, that means Christianity and Gentile lands in the town. And this is, this is Isaiah 63, and of the Jewish people, none are with him. 
But you don't know he's coming if he doesn't have his proper like Moses. And when Moshe acts here, that's me. All shepherds are reckoned with and dismissed before God. And he appoints me, Moshe, righteous servant Moshe, as uh, the only teacher he recognizes. Is that blurring again? I'm saying that's just you messing with my eyes. <laughs> he does. And believe me, he messes with my eyes all the time. It's part of the fire refinement, maltreatment, making me angry. So, picking up. Yeah, I couldn't know this information. Oh, I have it. And anybody who's been listening has it. God's interpretation of his, God's midrash on his book. <laughs> and excluding the Torah. He said they done fine with the Torah. They have picked it to pieces. God knew in modern times of secularism and reliance on science, medicine, and technology that his righteous servant might not be recognized, believed, or heeded. The utter destruction is simply on its way, just like with the Assyrians, Babylonians, and Romans long ago. Today, well, today... on the verge of going to war again with the Middle East. Uh, there's some great articles out there right now. Go to the Jerusalem Post. And uh, in particular, it's, it has to do with Iran and how they use the terrorist organizations to, uh, to get closer to destroying Israel. Now, he's here. And if everybody's just going to stick their heads in the sand and ignore who I am, after the scripture I have given, the, the proof that God has given me, if that's not enough for you to heed his prophet and listen to him, that's what he told Ezekiel, they don't listen to you, they don't listen to me. That's because if you don't listen to the prophet, you can't hear God speak. He speaks through them and has has them and me speak the words he wants me to speak in the tone and manner he wants me to say I'm just the servant and he has absolute total control of me today that may be Islam well again go see the Jerusalem Post God in his creation is his creation Absolute power and absolute knowledge, and he is his creation. That's how he defines himself. That's what he tells me to say. And it is his creation that brings utter destruction. Whatever happened to never again, never forget, has it been replaced with the world's going to love us by organizations such as Jews for Judaism? Because there's about 7 million Israeli Jews right now. Other destruction would probably take out 6 million. Does that ring any kind of a bell? I don't see anybody getting fearful about it with this war on all sides of your borders. From Iran, who has nuclear capabilities. Or could have it very quickly. If they... You don't think they could sink it by the U.S. and the Mossad? Better hope so. I wouldn't rely on that. I don't want to get God in Israel, and he, he doesn't come without me. As quick as I could. He may decide, if everybody is sticking their head in the sand, he may decide to just leave and let the utter destruction happen. Because the other destruction comes if his messenger Elijah does not clear the way. And I handle that rule myself. I can't believe you haven't built a temple on Mount Zion. It doesn't have to be on the temple now. I know all the problems with that. He doesn't want the temple now anyway. He says it's too small, tainted with Islam, and Jordan controls it. 
unless his righteous servant recounsels Okay. There is no mention of the destruction of the nations. That's the Gentiles. It is implied there will be destruction in the land of Israel, though not necessarily utter destruction. To build the third temple, there will be war in the Middle East. You can bet on it causing destruction in Israel and the loss of life among the Jewish people. But it is the building of the third temple on Mount Zion that prevents utter destruction by the nations against Israel. Lebanon, Syria, Iran, Jordan, and Egypt. Never again, never forget. Did you think that was going to happen to you? The Holocaust? Are you just kicking back saying it's going to be okay? The world loves us? Well, anti-Semitism's up. And Moshiach's here, and there's no Messianic here that's supposed to come with me. Defeating the enemies of the nations that come against Israel and the sanctification of Israel as a land and people blessed by God with his presence in his sanctuary it's how utter destruction is avoided in the awesome, fearful day of the Lord. At least it's a big factor. A day that is not one day, but the days beginning in 1948 when the Jewish people returned. That's all it's ever taken. Y'all return, make the land pretty again, make it bloom, and I'll come back. He wants to live amongst his people as he lived amongst the Israelites in their tents. A day that is not one day, but the days from that time, uh, at least until... Oh, okay, you're going to change that? Book hasn't been published yet. <laughs> God. I tell God, you can't even get a book published. <laughs> it looks like it's just too strong. They see it and they just go, we never even heard of this stuff. They, 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 that's not what the books we publish say. <laughs> Where, where's world exaltation? Where's, where's Messianic Gary? A day that established is and makes certain that the Jewish people will never be defeated and uprooted again from the lands of Abraham as provided in Jeremiah 31 and in Ezekiel in the covenant of friendship, which I think is chapter 34 and 37, you can find that. Never defeated and dispersed again or utter destruction. I know there's Jewish people listening to this. At least, at least tell your rabbi about it. See if he gets interested. Well, maybe I'll check it out. I think they have a responsibility to. But that's just me. God's righteous, oh, <laughs> and God's having me say it. God's righteous servant, as the messenger Elijah clears the way for God to return to his temple by making, uh, by being instrumental in having the third temple built. He says, I'm coming back. Malachi 3, his last words to the prophets before he stops speaking to them. going to send my messenger before me to clear the way and I'm going to return to my temple. My, uh, is it temple? Sanctuary, I think. That might be the covenant of friendship where he says he will place the temple there. Well, he's having, he does it. How does God do anything? He has a man do it for him. Or he does it through that man as he did, you know, uh, needed an ark. Had Noah build it. Anyway. He must be believed. I must be believed. 
and I need to be heeded. You kind of listen to these words. Utter destruction. <laughs> because it could be... What if he just leaves right now and just says, well, that's too imminent now. Well, they couldn't even get a temple built <laughs> as quickly as they needed. He says in Isaiah 53, a purpose that might prosper. He knew this might happen. Nobody listening. All I get are criminal, co uh, <laughs> criminal comments. It's not far off. Critical. Shunned, despised, held no account, plagued, smitten, and afflicted by God. <laughs> it's like they never even were, tried to figure out why, why would that be? I swear that it's like they think a, a man like, a deeply religious man like Jesus is coming. It's a real sweetheart. You think Moses was a real sweetheart? He killed a man in anger. Ezekiel said, I went in the fury and bitterness of my spirit in the hand of God. <laughs> he was in the fire refinement too. You do get furious and bitter. I've tried to quit. I told him to get the hell out of me and out of my house. He just hurt me so much. <laughs> he just laughed at <laughs> His spirit will say, there's he, he, nothing you can do about it. You can't tell him to leave stuff there. <laughs> yeah, they pile on on me. He speaks and writes the words of God as Moses did and will be invaluable as God's servant David in times of war. He's a savage warrior. King, ran a kingdom. Bought the Philistines. Y'all got the enemy living in your borders. Hell, they're funded by Iran through terrorist groups like Hamas. He speaks in the... Okay, okay, okay. In the beginning, he is shunned, despised, and held in no account. And the witnesses ask, who can believe what we have heard? Well, you're hearing it. The Lord's way is cleared only if his righteous servant is embraced by the people of Israel. That would be me. Observant and secular alike. Well, only 30% are observant. I think that applies just to Israel, but it could have been the Jewish people in general. Maybe it's higher in Israel. But you, you still, you, you, you might get, it's, it's going to be very expensive. Yeah, I've heard one organization say that they had raised the money to build it. Well, they don't even know <laughs> what God plans on building. What if he wants a gold, <laughs> gold inlay like the, uh, the first temple? Real gold. <laughs> Accepted. As the shepherd David, a leader, to tend the flock and be a ruler among them, not as a king with the kingdom. He is made suitable for God's purpose, which might prosper in the same manner Ezekiel was to be a prophet, through a fire of fire in the hand of God, by the Lord's words and power of chastisement, maltreatment, punishment, wounding, crushing, and bruising. Then I will appoint a single shepherd over them to tend them. This is, as, this is after he reckons with them and dismisses the shepherds. He's going to appoint one shepherd, and that's me. My servant David, which is Moshe. That's how he refers to Moshe. He shall tend them. He shall be a shepherd to them. I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David shall be a ruler among them. I, the Lord, have spoken, and I will grant them a covenant of friendship. Ezekiel, chapter 34, verses 23 through 25. The day of the Lord is the last prophecy of God. In that day, all remain prophecy of God in the Hebrew Bible is fulfilled. There's six. Four righteous servants to come, but only one description. My description of me. 
Neither one of these other three, Elijah, Moshe, and Moses, could ever possibly fit these verses. So it's not based on their lives that we know they're here. No, Isaiah prophesied I would be coming, and he described me for the day of the Lord. That's who God can have a visible representation or you won't know where he is. Of course, you have to believe. The sending of the prophet like Moses, the descendant of King David and Elijah, with the delivery of the new covenant of Jeremiah 31, of sin forgiveness and the covenant of friendship are all fulfilled in one man. God calls my righteous servant. And that would be me. One God of Israel, one angel of his presence, and one man, the righteous servant, a man and divine beings. An angel is the Holy Spirit. He is a person. A host, divine beings is all over the Hebrew Bible. Every one of the prophets. If God spoke to a man and he repeats it, he's repeating God's words. He's a man in divine beings, a host of the Lord's hosts. Who is God's virtual representation, his spokesperson, and a man he has absolute and total control of from his mind, emotions, and body to his every act and words, just as he did Ezekiel. That's it. Now, I'm sure God will have me repost them. Well, I told him we, we need to start dictating the book again after about six to eight reposts so they don't go bad. But anyway, there's some uh, real updated videos that look a lot better than what's been up there for a couple of years or two or three years. It really started uh, about three weeks ago. This is the third time I've gone through this book and put it on YouTube. Thanks for watching the video and uh, we'll see what they do. Go read the Jerusalem Post. I'm very serious about that. Are you still here? Oh, there you go. Okay. Yeah, you're still here. <laughs>